So there's an atmosphere in the nation of waiting with apprehension to see how this coronavirus unfolds. A lot of people are very frightened. Other people are more stoic, you know. We're all gonna die eventually. Obviously we don't wanna die in a sort of pool of blood, spitting up blood and suffering from uh, this type of influenza. And we wonder where did it come from? It came from Wuhan in China. And there's um, biological labs there dealing with virology, with the study of viruses, virology. And um, this Bill Gates and George Soros had a lot of investments in Wuhan. And the rumor is, or the speculation is, that they were behind this, the development of this, uh, this virus. And that for somehow it's got out Maybe they were testing it on people and it spread. Um, the organization they're involved with, Soros and uh, Bill Gates is called the Organization for Good People. So they call the Good Club, okay. It's the most elite club in the world. Ordinary people need not imply. Indeed, there's no way to ask to join. You simply have to be very, very rich and very, very generous on a global scale. This is the Good Club. The name given to the tiny global elite of billionaire philanthropists who recently held their first and highly secretive meeting in the heart of New York City. All right, just so you know, that is also, this was also held in Manhattan. New York, New York is just the official designation of Manhattan. Exactly where this was held. The names of some of the members of the familiar figures, Bill Cates, George Soros, Warren Buffett, Oprah Winfrey, David Rockefeller, and Ted Turner. So this is their meeting to save the problems of the world. They're going to save the world. All right, so let's see what they're talking about here. The topics focused on education, emergency relief, government reform, the expected depth of the economic crisis, and global health issues such as overpopulation. This is the most powerful people in the world getting together to discuss overpopulation. But their goal is to cull the world population to stop overpopulation whatever that means uh, I'd recommend that they actually took the first step and kill themselves and then uh, we leave us in peace you know these people who want to cull the world population so there's a lot of apprehension in the nation at the moment we're wondering how this coronavirus outbreak is gonna develop I mean you know it's like an extra 10 deaths every day in Italy the death rate is multiplying it's gone up by 200 a day, 300 a day. Now it's gone up by 400 a day. Mainly old people who are dying, as we know, over 70s. But that's tragic as well. They're dying in a lot of uh, pain and a lot of suffering. But younger people are dying as well, especially those with heart conditions or lung underlying problems. Uh, but uh, even to catch this virus sounds very, very unpleasant. So uh, we're keeping our distance from each other. A lot of old people have self-isolated. But we've come out today to North Wales to get the fresh air. England's a beautiful Wales, Britain, it's a beautiful place, you know. Uh, we can just go to secluded places, isolated places, and just enjoy the environment we live in, you know. Get out of the cities, get to the beaches, get into the mountains, and get the fresh air in your lungs. Uh, they're saying that old people should isolate themselves for 12 weeks. It's a long time. It's a long time to be boxed in a house, you know. But uh, this is the threat we face. We've faced threats like this in the past. The Black Death came in 1348 and ravaged this uh, this nation. I think it killed over a third of the population. More than one in three people died due to the Black Death, which was spread by a flea, which jumped onto people's clothes and then started sucking their blood and killed them, infected them. We've had other, we had the Spanish flu after the First World War, which killed upwards of a million people in this country died of the Spanish flu. It was brought back from the trenches by the soldiers. As they got off the train, they spread it into their villages and towns until it was spread right across Britain. And this, we know, has been brought in from China, from Wuhan. Uh, the areas where there was a lot of Chinese migrant labor, such as Milan, where a lot of Chinese work in the leather industry, and uh, in Quam, in Iran, where they were building a new multi-billion pound railway, and they were using a lot of Chinese labor, 
these have been the epicenters from where it spread but it's now with us it's in our society and uh, we've got to stay calm in the midst of this bro this crisis Piers Corbyn Jeremy Corbyn's brother he's pointed a finger at a, an organization called the good people which are a small coterie of billionaires the globalists and their agenda their agenda to control the world population and in, in October they ran a dummy run on coronavirus to see what would happen if there was a pandemic in the world and developing a vaccine to counter it so we have this dummy run in October and the coronavirus actually becomes a reality in the December I mean that is beyond coincidence so you're telling me two months before the coronavirus came out in December and it was finally identified in January and now oh my god there's a huge now it's being labeled a pandemic even though the numbers don't suggest that and everything's being shut down that they actually simulated this exact thing in Manhattan with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation October 18th 2019 dude what are the odds what are the odds that they would do a full on exercise about a coronavirus pandemic two months before it comes out? I mean, what are the odds of that? One in a million, one in a billion, a trillion? That's literally, that is, this is the most damning thing I've ever seen. So you're telling me that the UN and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and all these people simulated exactly what's going on now only two months before it happened. That, that is the most unbelievable thing I've ever seen. What's What are the odds of that? One in a million? One in a trillion? That they just happened to go through this exact test run two months before it happened? This has been released into the general population. And I saw when the Chinese first realized the nature of this virus how they responded i mean they've uh, basically imposed martial law on wuhan and they they totally cut off the town and really were a very draconian in stopping people from escaping that town i thought to myself at the time this is a dramatic reaction from the chinese they know how dangerous this virus is and yet we allowed it to spread to the west now donald trump straight away said to the chinese blanket ban you're not coming into america and he got a ferocious reaction from the globalists in america for doing that i mean joe biden said he was xenophobic for stopping the chinese coming in and there was a kickback in the deep state to tell donald trump what he was doing was spooking the market and it was going to call the cause of world's recession so donald trump backpedaled and softened his line and said well maybe it's just a flu virus and maybe it won't be so devastating after all and jared kirchner his son-in-law encouraged him along that path and brought in experts who were advising him to soften his message but it was the wrong approach and it was Tucker Carlson of Fox News who grabbed hold of Trump and said your initial response your instinctive response Donald was right you're not a politician you're a businessman you deal in reality and you know this is a serious threat to America speak out and stop it and Donald Trump then went on to declare a state of emergency because he realizes this is something very dramatic. And it's time to throw the whole globalist agenda out the cot. It's no longer required. I want to put our nations first, the safety and security of our people first. We want to control who comes into our country. Borders are there for a purpose. They're there to provide security. It says in the Bible, curse to those who remove the borders. Without borders, there's no order. Who do we know is coming into our country? Who are these Iranians who are coming across the channel in boats? Iran is an epicenter of this final outbreak. And yet these people have been allowed to just come into our country. And this has happened with, with uh, illegal immigration and mass immigration. TB, all sorts of other diseases, smallpox, have re-emerged in this country. And now we have this coronavirus. And it's threatening to kill thousands, maybe tens of thousands maybe even millions of British people. We're gonna to have to really steer ourselves to overcome this. You know, ultimately, we're just a body and we're all gonna die. But there's a spirit within us and it's important that that spirit is not broken. Turn to God at this time. Seek the Lord, seek the strength that he can give you. We're eternal, we're faced with eternity. We need to have that inner strength 
and uh, we can overcome this as we've overcome in the past we've had many crises in this nation not just great plagues but ferocious warfare you know great depressions civil war we've had many crises in Britain but we've always overcome and we shall overcome if we hold on to our traditions and our faith and our inner strength and support each other and take care of each other and put our trust in God and we shall win this so be strong thank you